Uh, very good. Um, the uh, <laughs> thing is just completely wiped my mind. Oh, and Sylvia Fish tried to log on. She said she was going to, she couldn't get it to work or whatever. So she was going to get Glenn, I think, whoever her son in law is, to help her. Microphone Yeti at speakers working test. Yes. Testing check one, check two. All righty then. Go down and get my materials. See my notes. Good for you. I gotta go get my notes now. This, this was mind stretching. Yeah, John is. <laughs> it's just so different from the others, and it is so hard to kind of let John be John, you know? It's hard to let any of them be just sit by themselves, you know, we have to bring everybody else in the room. Well, at the very beginning of it, it's, you start thinking about it and it gets deeper and more esoteric the more you think about it. Right. Quite true.
take tape downstairs. Okay. Our neighbors are people who take moving around with how thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. Say more about that. Um, the ease of movement. Uh -huh. You don't realize that you what you have until you lose it. Oh. And just I can remember being having the energy and the and the movement ability to run up and down stairs like you've been doing and stuff. And and people do things like that without even recognizing how blessed they oh, are. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. You know, but they're our neighbors too, it. because the, just because they're oblivious doesn't mean they're not our neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> That is the truth. Yep. It's not always issues of problems that make people our neighbors. Yeah, that's right. Oh. It's blessedness that makes people neighbors too. <laughs> yes. Um, it looks like we might be it. Well, we're still a little bit early. Still got four minutes, so it's early for the bushes. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes uh, Wendy said, I will be late. Uh, but headed that way. Bob's in the other class. Yep. So I'm recording it. And we've been trying to, you know, it's 
yeah, COVID just has erased everybody's memory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been buying all the stuff for the concession stand, you know, and nobody can remember what anything was priced out as. No. <laughs> so I've been on, you know, for a little while today, there was a text thread going among the band parent officers like, well, what if we priced it this way? And I got in touch with the guy who was there two years ago. I'm like, do you remember what we did? You know, all the, it just, oh my gosh, the back and forth and the texting, it just is, oof, just rough. <laughs> but I think maybe we finally, I think we finally got there. Are you involved with the band here in town? No, this I is. I didn't think so. Kids. Yeah, your kids. It's Harper's Band in South Walton, so. So you went over there to Sam's? No, the closest Sam's is here. You're kidding. Where I live. Oh, wow. You know, there's really not anything in Santa Rosa Beach. <laughs> like, there's just nothing there. There's not much in Sam's anymore either. I was there <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> you know, it was, um, yeah, they... Uh, I mean, there's, you go down on 30A, I mean, there's a Publix mm -hmm. and there's, and they're building more and more stuff and people are moving in down there like, oh, like crazy. gangbusters, but the, but there's no retail, you know, you've got to go either to Panama City Beach or, well, there's, if you go to Inlet Beach, there's like a CVS and some other stuff there, but, you know, this is pretty much, I mean, you know, I, I yeah, I know a lot of people that come over here and do different kinds of shopping, that sort of thing. You know, it's kind of wild. And we've got three within a very short distance. We got Destin here in the bar. Mm -hmm. so Hello, Sam. Uh, Hi. I said Bible study party for Yeah. 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 Hi, guys. What's up? Hi, y'all. It's a bit early. I can yet, so we'll. How you doing, Miss Wendy? I'm good. Ish. But I'm good. Ish, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like yeah. good. Yeah, poor thing. I unloaded on them before they got up. Did you grab a packet? I didn't because, you know, that's how I roll. <laughs> but I stole the stuff from last week. She is fast yet unobserved. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a whole thing in Eglin today while I was trying to get Mike's medicine, too, and I'm like, <laughs> like get on the ground i'm like oh, oh my god oh yeah somebody blew the gate i'm like this is not the time to blow the gate oh blew. really yeah and they popped that little thing up you know yeah that suv ran into it and then there were four people cuffed and dang wow you can't i'm like i just needed his drugs yeah <laughs> i said okay i need the lord's chicken so i went chick-fil-a yeah <laughs> as did i i mean you know <laughs> like you did uh-huh yeah, uh, this morning, you know, was driving back from Santa Rosa Beach and car started overheating. I had been smart enough to put gallons of antifreeze in the, so I only had to stop two times to <laughs> top it off. So I didn't hear anything from playground today. So uh -oh. that's, not good. that's not always good. Well, they have been really slammed lately too. And so they might not have just... I know I got to it. Yeah. So you're walking? Mm -hmm. So you're just walking now? I'm just at the mercy of friends. Yes. Oh, and staff, you have staff, friends. staff members. <laughs> well, you know, three of us live right on there. Carmel. Yeah. You right. know, right there together. So it's easy enough. And so Will had a friend who stayed the night last night who's getting ready to go to college. So I dread going home to that. It's like, oh, Doug's going to college and my life's not going anywhere. It's like, oh, God, well, uh, please, just, just. Yes, mm. yes. So, yeah, so he had a ride to work and Deanna's waiting downstairs. She'll carry me home when we're done. So she's tonight, so Caden's doing that, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. everything works out. It does, it does, don't it? Yeah. It does. Donut, that sounds good too. <laughs> <laughs> Donut? Donut. 
Those, those. Some Krispy Kreme. Oh, that's just too Dark. far. <laughs> you could have gone all night without saying that. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, yeah, it's just really weird. I just feel like this is such a weird time in my life with not having two kids in school. Like, first time in mm -hmm. long long time and you know everything just feels a little odd right now a little I'm strange there's something just out of sync yeah, yeah it's just not right it's mm -hmm. like that dream where everything is normal except that it's slightly not it's slightly mm -hmm. yeah and uh i kind of feel like that's what i am walking through in my waking hours <laughs> just trying to figure it all out hey mike how are you i'm here what's what's you? Solo? <laughs> I can see that Kim doing okay. She's all right. She's the middle of her feet a lot. It's bothering her. Making her do chores. Mm, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said you're making her do chores, and he yeah. said I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me flip that. Is she making you do chores? <laughs> she doesn't make me do anything. I don't will you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you got to pull the man card, right? Well, I had a conversation with my daughter this past. Well, we we talked a lot because she's got a lot going on. But I said, you know, I said, in a marriage, it's not supposed to be 50 50. No, Never. it's supposed to be 100 100. It's supposed to be 100 100. Mm -hmm. I said, unfortunately, some people's hundreds up here, <laughs> and some people's hundreds are down there. See, it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent of your capacity. Yes. Yes. Right. right? Exactly. And so some of us are not as capacious. <laughs> That's right. I said, so, yeah. you know, I can do my hundred as long as you will to do your hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but when you only do your 30 and I gotta do oh, 120. <laughs> so Sylvia Fish, here she is. Hello, Sylvia Fish. You are muted at the moment, which may be fine. Uh, normally I can ask you to unmute yourself, and that's what has to happen a lot of times when you're on a device because somehow the buttons all disappear when you use. I hate using Zoom on like a phone or yes or whatever. So um, Sylvia, we're glad you're here. If if you want to lean in and say hi, we hope you can see us. Um, and in fact. Um, Let's see, how do I do that now? I'm trying to remember. I've forgotten since I've slept since last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. And oh, I don't want that. They should make a Zoom for uh, oh, here we go. I uh, don't worry, I'm going to uh, <laughs> I've got, I've got utensils. Okay, let's try this. We got one. I'm going to throw one across the room, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get where you can see other people too. He's getting his phone numbers the same, so if you have a phone number, um, he uh, he's well, working up in no, Milton. It's not plugged okay. as a corrections officer. Okay. That's the reason. Why. Well, that's not hurting. Uh, Here's the problem. Uh, oh, you know, hotel. Like, no, what do you, you don't yeah, put it in. That didn't it's well, not available. He was a family's first. Yeah. But he couldn't pass the stats. Now watch it. That's like he well, did last week. So he got there. cut with his training because of COVID. Uh, so then you got to teach yourself. And Matthew is not to teach myself. Yeah, I'm a visual learner. 
So he could pass the test with the card. Oh, your email address. Mm. It's like a wow, oh, look at yeah, that. Yeah. 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 I'm quite in the picture, and that's perfectly done. I'll just put my hand up there. Yeah. Yes, Wendy is over there. So, yeah, I'm in the corner. All right, you feel your own squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Great to uh, great to see everybody tonight. It's been busy days, and uh, it's nice just to take a moment to breathe and uh, be with one another. So let us pray. Hmm. Um, God, tonight we need to consider the gospel according to John. And as we do, we ask that you would um, that you would help us do more than um, hear it and listen to it, but that you would help us begin to experience it and to comprehend it, to grasp it, to know it. Um, and may we discover in so doing that you are grasping us, that you are connecting with us, that you are knowing who we are as well. For that was the point of the incarnation in Jesus Christ. Uh, be with those who cannot be with us tonight. And... Bless all those who want to be here and cannot. Bless those who are traveling. Bring them back safely here to us. All this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Squeak it All right. So tonight we are looking at the prologue. So I've given you a sheet. And what I promised you last week was and the sheet has nothing on it other than the actual biblical text, Sylvia. If you happen to be hearing me, the sheet has nothing on it other than the Bible itself and um, several themes uh, that I haven't even written out. So, if you have your own sheet of paper, you can just write down these themes as we go. So there are eight. There are eight themes, and we're going to take a look at those. Um, but before we do, it might be helpful for you to know um, a thing. Um, so there, uh, there was um, about three centuries, two to three centuries before the time of Christ, in Egypt, the primary language at that time in the Mediterranean basin was Greek. Um, and it was kind of the universal language for the area. And um, uh, so there was a group of scholars in Egypt that undertook a translation of the Hebrew Bible. Um, that uh, translation became known as the Septuagint. And so it was a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. Um, it's also uh, the abbreviation for it is often LXX, which is the, of course, the um, the uh, Roman numerals for seventy, um, <laughs> because it was it's a thought that there were seventy scholars. It's actually the legend because there are lots of legends around this, and so one of the legends is that. There were six scholars uh, from each of the 12 tribes, which is almost certainly not true, but this is what they said. Six scholars from each of the 12 tribes, and they were all kind of working on their own to translate it. And when they all got together, they were exactly the same. This is a legend, right? There's no actual proof of this. But, um, uh, but at any rate, the Septuagint became... Because Greek was the predominant language, um, even you know anywhere in the Mediterranean basin, it became uh, the language. It became the Septuagint became the Bible of preference, the scriptures of preference for early Christians. So, um, 
So there's a lot of evidence that John was quite familiar with the Greek translation of the Old Testament. And we'll see that even in the first words that we, we have tonight. Um, all right, so let's just dive in, shall we? All right, will somebody please read those first five verses for us out loud? Go, Mike. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. All right. So with those first three words in the beginning, <laughs> um, what does that remind you of? It's not the next one. <laughs> Not, yeah. Genesis, the beginning. Right, the beginning of Genesis. So that should give us a pretty strong hint uh, as to a major theme in John's gospel, that this gospel is going to be a lot about creation. Um, so I have these themes on eight sheets, and so we will place them around in various places with scotch tape. Linda will probably get on here. allowed to use that on the walls. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> structures on the wall where it's turned into the Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's right. So creation. Um, so creation is a, is a, so where do you see that theme in these five verses? Contrast of darkness and light. Mm -hmm. Well, and that the word is what created it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the word, right, in the beginning, God said, mm -hmm. let there be light, right? So, um, uh, <clears throat> so right there already, you know, we have two or three connections to that beginning of Genesis. So what would you? What would you then think that, you know, if God, uh, if, if this is a, deeply connected to the creation story, then what is the claim that might be being made here at the beginning of this story? In other words, how are these two connected? I mean, everything's already created. Why do we begin the story of Jesus in this way? Because he's the son of God and he's the word and he created it. All right, so he was there then. But can it go the other way too? Yep, he's still alive. <laughs> Darn it, that's not the case. That's right, you know, that's right. Uh, and the resurrection in John's gospel takes place in a garden where Jesus is mistaken for a gardener um, and even more so um, in that, that what God is about is creating life God is about creating abundant life and Jesus is about giving life. Um, so, you know, yeah, that we we see definitely this. Uh, so uh, you already named it, um, uh, Mike, but I'll go ahead and put it up. There's that the next theme or another theme that we see in John's gospel is the contrast between light and darkness, right? Um, which is, again, a creation image. So, um, well, we'll talk about, we'll talk more about light and dark uh, as we go on because it's all through, it's all through the prologue. Um, 
Um, I want us to talk for a moment about this phrase, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Um, why, in other words, let's, let's talk about those, <laughs> like, um, what, uh, what do those mean? In other words, what, it's not just pretty poetry, they mean something. You know, what is the claim being made about that Jesus, Jesus is the word? That Jesus is the word. But God thought the word and then he spoke the word. Right. So that there's a, a timeline here as God became aware of his creative abilities and then used it. So like yes, cheat sheet says the word was another, another expression for God. Mm -hmm. So um, in the, in Greek, the word um, that is translated as word is logos, right? Mm -hmm. L-O-G-O-S, logos, which is a little richer <laughs> Um, in meaning than our um, than our English word word, um, but let's just start with our English word word. Um, the you know a word is what is a word? Let's just talk about it. what a, what what be a word? A unit of information. It is a unit of of information. A string of sounds that have meaning for us. Mm -hmm. So that's right. That, that, that the implication is that when somebody speaks a word, so, you know, if I want to talk about the gourd, um, you have to, like, I mean, what is a gourd? No idea, right? Well, it's a word, but it lacks meaning entirely, right? Because there is no gourd that that phoneme is pointing to, right? And this is something I always, I get lost in this sometimes. I sit back in thinking in, in useless ways about, you know, who was the first person who saw the, you know, furry four-footed thing with a tail that wags and said, dog, dog, you know, why? I mean, it, it means in any other language, you know, if we go to, some other, you know, language and talk about dog, they may not have any idea, you know, what we, I mean, in French, it's chien, right? So, um, uh, and in Spanish, no, it's perro, right? right? So, uh, you know, it's a phone, a word is a phoneme, but that phoneme points at something. It signals something, it's symbolic of something that all language is an intricate set of semantic devices that we use to convey meaning. So when God in the beginning says, let there be light, um, <clears throat> God knows what that points to. But the beautiful thing about God is God can not only, uh, God, God not only has the intention or the desire, God also has the capacity to fulfill it. Um, and uh, that if, if you think about um, that, that God in the beginning says light, but the word light is actually Jesus. Right? The word that emanates from the heart of God that creates it then so there are some forms of speech that even do more than that we share in this with god there are some forms of speech that the, that create these circumstances whereby something can happen for instance <clears throat> if um <clears throat> if two people uh, stand uh, before one another uh, at the altar, right? You, you've had this experience, <laughs> and um, the 
the the efficient says, you know, will you have this person to have and to hold to live and all that as long as you both shall live? And you say, I will. And then the other person says, I will. And together, these words, without these words, there's no, there's no marriage, right? But it's the words themselves that actually create the thing, right? Um, so Jesus is that speech act of God, right? That makes creation possible. That is how intimately connected to God Jesus is. That um, if God creates by speech, Jesus is the speech that God uses. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the concept of logos in Greek use is, is more than just a phony, right? Or a symbol of, you know, of, of sound symbol. Uh, that word grows to mean something like the logic of something or the interior, the, um, the, um, um, uh, the reasonable organization of something. I like the definition that I got here. Mark. Yeah, go ahead. What do you got? This is um, logos, meaning the word thought, concept, and the expression thereof. Right? That's it. So, right, because you and I, most of the time, before we speak, sometimes we speak before we think. <laughs> sometimes we create all, all kinds of things without, without thinking. But most of the time, if we're acting with intention, we choose certain words. But those words are in our hearts and our intention before they are actually spoken. So the logos can also mean... Um, um, kind of an organizing principle, right? um, <clears throat> which is very Grecian because they're very linguistic, like very linguistic culture. There's a reason why Greek culture tends to be more pervasive and thoughtful and all these things than Roman culture. Right? Roman culture is, we get a lot of good engineering and, you know, this kind of thing. But Greek culture, we get the thought and the, you know, uh, anyway, okay. So, yes, Jesus is that word. So he, he, in the beginning, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Because it's hard to separate these things apart from one another. So this is a, this is a commentary, then, on... Jesus's origin, his relationship, and his identity. You know, if you have to, if you, if somebody, if you're in a new group of people, and you are trying to explain to someone who you are. Well, what do you say? I mean, what do you? What are the things that you talk about when you say, "Tell us, you know, Wendy, tell us a little bit more about yourself." We don't know you. What do you say? My name. Say your name, sure. The kids I have, I'm married. Mm -hmm. Your relationships, right? Relationships. Right. See, there's, there's, there's relationships, right? You keep on talking. Let's suppose you're in, uh, you know, you're in Philadelphia, and you're trying to. People are like, "Oh, you have a, you have an interesting accent." You know where? You know, tell us, tell us how you got that. Don't pick on us more. I'm just. <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. And you would say, and you would say, I'm from you have an interesting accent. Right? <laughs> you have the accent, not me. But you would probably talk about, you know, where you're from. Right? Right, where you grew up. Where you were born and raised. Where you were born, where you were raised, right? Exactly. And you know, you would also talk about, you know, um, you know, I work for a university, uh, these are the things that I do. Um, you know, you would sort of give some details which would flesh out your identity. <clears throat> and 
These three categories are of prime importance to John's audience. Because if you remember, these is, this is a very Jewish, uh, this is a very Jewish group of people that he's writing to. And John is writing to a group of people that are probably, uh, if you remember the, the, um, the phrase that she used last time, the uh, parting of the ways, where the, the church in its increasing claim that Jesus was not just a rabbi or a child of God, but was God which is very offensive to the Jewish mind. Um, and in increasing persecution, these two groups. So John's church is, John's community is full of people who are probably disconnected from their origins. Many of their primary relationships have been severed and their Jewish identity is under the mark of the question, right? So, these kinds of categories, I mean, we're getting down to the heart of who, per, what personhood is, right? So John leads with this basic, with, in the first sentence, right, with a comment on these three things about Jesus. Jesus is from God, is intimately connected to God, and in fact, is so much so that you could not distinguish him from God. He, the word was God. You know, um, this is a this is a pretty monumental, you know, it's a pretty monumental claim. <clears throat> pretty important to us too. But it's also easy to see how how this could be. Um, a tough set of categories for, you know, people who have been, you know, rejected by their own synagogues, their own families, you know, um, for this belief. <clears throat> so John comes right out of the gate saying, you know, here's the claim I'm making. Um, and has been from the beginning, right? Um, all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. That Jesus is that creative expression of God that gives birth to everything, all flesh. You know? Yep. Yep. What was Jesus thinking? What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. Um, that, um, you know, that, that um, what we know is that without light, life is nearly impossible. Right? Um, and so life um, uh, it is that kind of key quality that comes into being through him. Livingness, the, 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 I mean, you think about it, I mean, boy, Matthew, Luke, and John, they're just, I mean, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are like, you know, hey, there was a God, there was a birth, there was a, you know, all this stuff. And this is, this is big time theology here, you know. Um, <clears throat> and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't overcome it. That, uh, that word overcome is closely related to words for grasping and um, uh, understanding, comprehending. And I think even in the King James, I think somewhere it, it says that, and the, the dark comprehended it not, right? I did, didn't it say that? Um, uh, so that sense of overcoming is about, it's related to that set of words that we're going to find that are really important in John's gospel. Believe it, knowing, abide. <clears throat> um, and the the last 
theme in this particular section. You know, when light shines in the darkness, things get revealed, right? So the primary role of Jesus is to reveal God. So now we have a weird shift um, in this next four verses. <laughs> um, uh, it actually has led some scholars to say, this feels like an insertion. <laughs> um, but when we look at these themes, it's fairly easy to see, right? That um, maybe not. All right, so somebody read six through nine. Who's got it? All right, go. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens every man. All right, so suddenly we shift to this story about a person named John, right? Uh, the first person named in the gospel, right? There are no uh, proper names other than God. It's, it's not a proper name. Uh, but uh, so what do you make of that? Why put that here? After you've had all this soaring kind of rhetoric, you know, all of a sudden there was a man who came from God and his name is John. Bringing it down to the human level that people could grasp and understand. Okay, say so how does how does that connect to John? Um, people knew John mm -hmm. and had seen him and heard him preach and stuff. And so there was an ability to connect with him. And if he's saying that Jesus is the word of God, then it's more believable than just somebody they don't know saying that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess I'm confused why it's there. Mm -hmm. Because the ones that come after that, like if those were shifted up and then that was the last part, it would actually taper down. Mm -hmm. But it feels like we're really zoomed out and then we zoom in and then we zoom back out. And then we just, and that's, I guess, why they think it seems like an insertion. Yeah. yeah. It's a sandwich effect that we talked about. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, uh, and the interesting thing is, is that usually when you have that sandwich, you know, where you have a story that begins and then you interrupt it for another story and then continue the first story. Usually, of course, what you're looking for is how these things play together, you know. Um, uh, and um, here you have this very divine, right, kind of concept that's going on. And then you rush down, right, all of a sudden to the level not only of a human, but one human, right? Um, and what is that human's job? Or what is that? What is that? What is this human doing that makes him remarkable in this case? Proclaiming the coming of Jesus. Okay. He's, he's the announcement. He is. Look out! He's, here he comes. He's the politician <laughs> riding in the car down the street, telling everybody what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> what do they call that in the, in the Senate when the president walks out? The guy who walks out before the president. Oh yeah, yeah. Hear ye, hear yeah, ye, yeah the yeah. president of the United States. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Parliamentarian or yeah, the right. Special, whatever. That's what I feel like. This is what John the Baptist <laughs> was. Right, a herald. Right, a herald. Um, H E R. Um. um <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the, the, here's here's the thing, and this is part of the con part of that sort of notion of light and dark. That here you have all this soaring rhetoric about who the word is. 
We don't even get the name Jesus in here, right? He is sent to testify to the light. As if he didn't testify it, you wouldn't see it. Because the light is thoroughly intertwined with a normal human. So a major thing um, in this gospel is that Jesus reveals uh, that in him, God is holding the divine and human together. Not 50-50, right? That's what it's like. Hunter, Hunter. That, um, you know, that the, um, what is it that there's a hymn, there's a hymn phrase somewhere that I cannot, I can't quite remember what it is, but eternity contracted to a span, right? Eternity contracted to the span of, a, of one human. So that it becomes very difficult for someone to see the, um, the actual living word of God unless there is someone else who has come to believe, know, and understand this. Um, so let's look at this a little more closely. A man sent from God, his name was John. We will hear more about him next week. He came as a witness to testify to the light. So here is a word that is um, pretty vitally important for John's gospel too. And that is witness. Witness is a primary category of discipleship. Um, like testimony, um, witness, oh, I cannot keep um, you know, uh, this is a juridical term um, used when. Um, what does juridical mean? Um, so, having to do with um, the, the legal world, right? Um, so, <clears throat> when someone is called upon to give witness um, or to, to testify, um, that this is these are terms that are used in court, <clears throat> um, where someone uh, promises to tell the truth. Right? Uh, one of the commandments is, "Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor." Um, in other words, to lie to them about something of crucial importance, you know, <laughs> that would not cut muster in a court of law. Right? Um, so John's role is to testify to the light, to tell what he sees, um, so that all might believe through him. <clears throat> John is the first one, right? John is the first one that uh, that aims his finger at the Christ and says. As we will see, the whole the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. <clears throat> he himself was not the light, <laughs> but he came to testify to the light. Now, what might that indicate? Why would that need to be said? Because Jesus is the light, mm -hmm. and so no one else can be the light. John can only say he is the light. Right. Well, it may indicate that there was, you know, John had disciples too. And there may be some argument in the early church over, you know, who really was the light. Right. Um, uh, and we'll hear, we'll talk more about this next week too, because 
Uh, there's a whole um, dialogue with John um, as we, John, well, and John in this gospel is never called the Baptist, never called the baptizer. He is John the witness, right? So that baptizing is not his primary role, right? Where it is in the other gospels. The word witness as a noun, not counting just the verb forms, the word witness as a noun is used 14 times in this gospel. It is, a, it is an important category. Um, okay, that, let's go back to the divine now. <laughs> and we have our human sandwich in here where, you know, that, that you, can, you can have you can have this characteristic of Jesus as a divine, you know, the word, the light, all of this, but, you know, it takes place in human form, right? All right, somebody read the next four verses. Carol, you got them? Sure. Great. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. Hmm. So what do you hear there? What seems to be a what seems to be an important point about that? Well, it reminds me of um, prophets not acknowledged in their own town. In mm -hmm. way. You know, that's what it reminds me of. He created the world, but the world wouldn't accept it. So this is a sub thing that is closely related to light and dark. Um, and that is this notion of the world. Um, the world is what God loves. And by world, um, the, the Greek word there is cosmos, right? Cosmos. Um, and meaning the creation, right? The, 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 the created order of things. And <clears throat> God loves the world, and yet the world doesn't always love God back. <laughs> um, but what of those that did love him back? They were given the special privilege of being children of God. So there is the next thing. Running out of space. Let's see. Uh, we'll put them down here, maybe we'll won't have to mess with them too much. That God is the parent in whom we abide as children. <clears throat> God is the parent to be to be a child of God in this gospel is an absolutely literal claim. It's not a mere metaphor. Um, every aspect of the parent-child relationship is operative in our relationship with God. Everything a child would need, God provides. That, that's the claim of this gospel. It may or may not be your experience, but that's the claim of the gospel. That if you if you receive, uh, you know, if you receive uh, the word um, and uh, th then God gives you the opportunity to become God's own child uh, and quite literally so, um, which would be important in this community where there are probably a lot of orphans, right? who have been, you know, 
cast away from their own families for their faith and belief, have become disconnected from their own communities. Um, in a world where family means a lot, right? Because, you know, there are not a lot of other social structures that can, you know, that can help you. Um, so all of a sudden you find yourself in a new family, uh, not with a human being as a father, um, but with, with the God who created everything. All right, and I'll read the um, last section. We may stop a bit here and there. And the word became flesh and lived among us. What does yours say, um, Wendy? Made his dwelling among us. Made his dwelling. Anybody else got something different? Dwell. So it's um, uh, the, the Greek word there literally means tented or tabernacled with us. The word became flesh. And Eugene Peterson in his message, you know, the message uh, paraphrase that he uh, wrote, which is so incredible sometimes, uh, says uh, he moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> moved into the neighborhood. Um, do you remember another time when God's presence became really palpable to his people? Maybe even in a tabernacle or a tent. When they were traveling in the desert for 40 years, mm -hmm. the, you know, his presence was there. As what? What was what in what forms? Flame, mm -hmm. fire, light. Yes. So in the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, darkness meant a lot more back then <laughs> than it does now. Um, that in the darkness, you know, God's presence was that the fire by night, you know, um, dwelling right in the midst of the people in their wilderness wanderings. And, you know, here is John writing to his community, which is, you know, cut off, wandering in, in the wilderness of Asia Minor, uh, the culture, the wilderness of the culture. And the claim is that, um, you know, that this word, the idea of God is, is completely present to them. Um, has become flesh and lives among us. But now, in a different way. Um, God is utterly committed right, to his people. That's why God guides, leads, those kinds of things. But you see, now God not only goes with them, but God is them. God is one of them in Jesus. The dwelling of God is not just with us, but it is who we are. So, you know, we too, because of the incarnation, are part of that tabernacle, right? We're part of that tent in which the word becomes flesh. Um, this is shocking to me, right? It's absolutely almost scandalously beautiful, right? That, um, that God is choosing to offer us a relationship of intimacy and love that until the incarnation, God only shared with the word. You know, 
chooses to, in Jesus, invite us into it. Um, this is this is the outcome of God's love, right? That God's uh, that God's dwelling place is not only with us, but it is us, and that um, you know um, God is is God not only goes where we go, but God is one of us. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all right. Um, the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and tr truth. All right. So let's pick some of these words apart a little bit here. Glory. Now, what is glory related to among the themes that we've already talked about? Happiness of God. Yeah. yeah. Glory is a word that's really related to brilliance and splendor, right? And um, uh, that sense of light, right? So here we see his glory, right, in the incarnation. When the word, as the word becomes flesh, we have seen his glory. Um, but interestingly, um, the word glory in the gospel is, is only applied to his crucifixion and resurrection and um, ascension, right? But the thing is, is that you can't have that glory unless you have the glory of the incarnation, right? Got to have that glory first. Um, John testified to him and cried out, this is was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. Right? Probably another little word of apology there to kind of let people know that John knew his place. <laughs> From his fullness, all have received grace upon grace. Here is the last thing. And that is the abundance of grace and life. That word fullness feels like completeness, right? Super abundance, kind of the cup running over. There's so much grace from his fullness. We have all received grace upon grace, right? That, 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 that Jesus is like this overflowing fountain of grace, and it's just toppling over, you know, on us. Um, Jesus becomes flesh. And the, the word becomes flesh, and that word is grace. Um, the word grace is only used four times in this gospel, and it's right here in this, in chapter one, right here. <clears throat> because now that the word has become flesh, and that word is grace, <laughs> then everything Jesus does after this is related to that sense of grace. You know? The rest of the gospel shows what grace looks like, what it tastes like, what it smells like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. Everything that happens from here on out it's like that the you know the first um, sign that he performs is turning water into wine, and not just a little wine, but huge stone jars of wine, and not just any wine, but the finest wine. It's that right. That is this sign of 
the kind of grace and life and love that are being offered by God through the word, right? Through him. <clears throat> and you know, God is not only committed to revealing this in Jesus, but God is committed to knowing and feeling it for himself. Right? That in Jesus, you know, we have the divine and human so thoroughly intertwined that, you know, God is no, God is no longer kind of a disembodied, you know, but that God, God can share this life, you know, with us in these very tangible ways that God is committed to that too. I just got to tell you, you know, this is unique. You know, there are other religions that talk about God coming in the form of something, right, of something else. Um, but, the, you know, God choosing to in just, you know, so completely identify with human plight um, and to know where that story is going to go, you know, you don't find that. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to diss other religions. I'm just trying to say, this is cool. <laughs> like, this is unique, right? This is very, this is a very unique kind of thing. So um, let's talk about that word truth for a moment, full of grace and truth, which happens a couple of times here. Yeah, uh, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law was indeed given through Moses. Grace and, to, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Finally, we hear his name. Okay, finally, we hear his name. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. See, it's funny he would mention Moses there, you know, because Moses um, only got to see, you know, God kind of from the backside, almost like a reflection. Um, but you know, it is Jesus whose, whose face reveals um, everything about God. Close to the Father's heart. Okay, well, let's talk about grace and truth first. So in John's gospel, truth is not a fact. You know, it is not a, you know, a factoid to, that one can sort of, you know, assent to. Um, truth is a relationship. Scooping. Mm -hmm. It's not a proposition, but a revealing of God's presence. That's truth. Not facts to be proven, like, you know, what, but love to be experienced in Christ. So truth is not a what, truth is a who. I, he will say later, I am the way and the truth, right? And the life. Um, <clears throat> at, you know, toward the end of the gospel, you know, Pilate will be like, you know, Jesus will be talking about the truth that comes in the, this relationship through him. And Pilate says, what is truth? But, you know, he thinks truth is a what. <laughs> but for Jesus, truth is a who. Um, the son who is close to the father's heart. Uh, the word that's translated heart there is actually the much better word. The, so the Greek word for heart is cardia, you know, from which we get cardiac. But the Greek word there is, that's translated heart is kalpos, which means breast, bosom. Um, and, um, you know, almost a, almost a matronly image, you know, there. All right, so we've got these eight things, and these, we will see them over and over and over again, right? These are the eight themes that will form the matrix, right, that make 
sense of who Jesus is and what, you know, and what belief is and what, you know, what faith is, what uh, um, knowing God is like. It's like coming out of a dark cave and walking into a lightened room. It's, uh, you know, um, what am I supposed to do in my relationship? Well, we abide in God, but we also witness, right? We witness to God. Um, these, you know, these eight themes are, um, um, are going to be the, the things that we'll be wrestling with, you know, really from, from now on. So um, if you will, for if, well, so any, anything, any, uh, any observations? So I'll be less teachy next time. We'll kind of dive in. Um, the thing that struck me was that we see grace upon grace, and then they mentioned Moses. The Ten Commandments were a form of grace because it gave mm -hmm. humans boundaries within which to live our life for God's glory. Sure. And then Jesus compounded that grace by living as us and showing us how to do that. So this is so the the law is a form of grace, right? The law is a form of grace. In that it establishes the boundaries within which we can have a relationship with God. But the problem is we couldn't do we couldn't do it, right? right? It it was it became a source of condemnation for us as we would ignore it. And God was <clears throat> God was not um, God was not satisfied to let that be our relationship. That our relationship was constantly one of, you know, transgression of a covenant. Um, rather, God wanted this to be a relationship, and so God elects right to come in the form. Of, of grace and truth through the offering of this person, you know. Um, yeah, it's good. It's a very different understanding of atonement in a way, will be, where, um, you know, you know, why does God become human? Well, there's the whole kind of, well, Jesus is, you know, we've offended, we've offended the honor of God um, and have brought an eternal amount of shame and guilt upon ourselves. And, you know, it takes an eternal sacrifice in order to bridge the gap and we can't do that. And, you know, so God provides the sacrifice in his son um, who is able to, you know, it's, it's almost mathematical, right? transactional. Um, and this is much more about God just refusing to let this state of things be continue the way they were because his love was too great. Right? And um, so God, um, you know, God himself comes. Not only grace, but mercy. Mm, yep. All right, anything else? Any thoughts, observations? So I think it, <clears throat> to me, it really jumps out, and I guess it, I, I never really paid attention to this intro, but I mean, as we dig into it, there is a, like you pointed out, there are a lot of waves in almost every single statement, and it's kind of crazy to me that they put it all in the front matter. I know. <laughs> right? I mean, I could understand, right. you know, if, if I was trying to construct something, especially as just trying to transmit information, you know, I probably want to save all of these huge weighty things towards the end. Be like, hey, look at everything that we've gone through with the entire gospel and life of Jesus. And then here's what it's getting after. But in this case, it's right up front. At, yeah, I guess, you know, the last week's session was really interesting because you stated that uh, it was John's gospel. I think that was circulating last, right? And it really seemed to be addressing some of these theological differences and concerns that were popping up. And again, the author is just not afraid to, to dig right into it. And here, you know, here are the big major points. And then let's go ahead and go through the, the life of Christ to, to back up all these claims. Like if we're going to, right, if we're going to, I mean, it is very upfront kind of, 
thing. Um, some people believe that, um, you know, that maybe, you know, he is drawing on a hymn, hymn or some hymns from somewhere else to kind of stitch this together. But all of these themes so beautifully weave into everything else in the next 20 chapters that it's hard to kind of see it as, oh, I mean, he would have had to take the hymns and then devise the whole rest of the thing based on that, you know. So it's hard to see how that could be the case. It's, um, uh, it is a very different kind of statement about Jesus than the other gospels make. Mm -hmm. But it is the statement about Jesus that we come to confess <laughs> more, more forcefully than anything else that, you know, Jesus isn't just, um, Jesus isn't um, one of the created order. Jesus is the creator, right? You know, and uh, it's a big claim, but it turns out to be the one that wins, right? You know, the one that works, maybe it should be. Um, better put, it. yeah. So uh, this often, now this is an interesting thing too, that um, you often have these kinds of forms in novellas in Gre the Greco-Roman world where you have, if you and if you read Paul's letters too, a lot of times in the front matter, as you um, beautifully put it, in the front matter, he will write a prayer, right? He writes this prayer of thanksgiving in which he basically prays out everything he's about to talk about, right? So you can go down through the, the, um, the opening prayer of thanksgiving and be like, okay, he's going to be talking to us about this, that, this, and that, and sure enough, that's what he wants us talking about now. So, all right. Anything else for the good of the order? Anything we need to be praying for? We're praying for Mike. He's doing okay. One day. We didn't do chemo this week because his platelets were too low. So, we try again next week. Okay. So, is he has his appetite? It, it's off and on, and it's weird things that he can eat. But right now, I'm just pushing the protein shakes. Yeah. So we can get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and, yeah. And yeah. And energy level. Sure. Zero energy. Mm. Probably due to platelets. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was probably just coming off of day nine of COVID. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Is he bad? Has he been, oh, had to be hospitalized he, or anything? No, no. He's yeah. home and he had, he had a fever for about the first three days, a little bit of congestion, but. You know, he's quarantined himself, you know, his wife and his son. And, but, so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, just like, I got to get out of the house. He's pulling my trade. He's out and out every day. Right. He doesn't stay in the house. I feel well. Maybe that's the next one. Uh, the rest of one and chapter two. So we'll take a look at the remainder of chapter one where there's a lot in it, okay? There's a lot in it. And then chapter two, of course, uh, you know, wedding at Cana and the cleansing temple. So there's quite a bit there. Yeah, just some basic stuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just, just a little basic. bit, just a little bit. Just your basic clearing. So, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. All right, you guys okay? Anything? One of my schools started today, so it's going to be One of your schools? How many schools you got? Now? Yeah, so I'm teaching at JSU online, so I can stay in contact with my grad students. Oh, for them yeah. To That's cool. Yeah, and yeah. UWF starts on Monday, so yeah. <laughs> I, I ordered a planner. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so what, are you, what courses are you teaching? Um, I'm teaching 102, which is intro bio, which is my favorite thing to teach, um, and it's non-majors, so my goal is always to recruit some of them. Yeah. Um, and then for UWF, I'm teaching, it's like an intro to marine biology course, which should be pretty cool, and then I get to do three ecology labs, and they want me to do like what I was doing at JSU, so it's like a big semester-long experiment instead of doing what we call the cookbook labs, mm -hmm. so I'm pretty excited. A semester-long experiment. Ooh. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So if you screw it up now, that, well, by the time you get to the end, it's a mess. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of like what we're trying to teach them. It's like um, people tend to think of science as like we know it's going to end up like this, and we just have to do these three things. And 
really it's every step of it is horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, did, what did you say earlier? Scandalously beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so immersing them in that has had a lot of uh, profound impacts, not only on their ability to learn things, but their confidence. And so now they can problem solve and they feel better about like, okay, this isn't the end of the world. We can fix it this way. And so uh, that's why UWF built my resume. And so I'm proud to do it right here. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. They definitely need to learn to our problem solving skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. When, they, when they quit teaching to that in school, that was the biggest problem. Well, yeah, so it's ramping right. back up now. So. Yeah. So when you fall off the radar come grade, grading time, we'll know why. So right? when I look, no, it's going to happen earlier than that. When I look oh. like I've crawled out of a gutter, y'all know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Well, if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Uh, I'll be happy to mark papers for you. Probably write leaves know. later, maybe. Do it. I might need a lot of leaves. So. Oh, okay. I'll let you know. Oh, leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those are hard to find here. Uh, but there's not a lot of there's a lot of needles. <laughs> yeah. We got your leaves. At least, at least five leaves. It's gonna be a lot of leaves. Several. So it's different several species. No, it's just like a lot. Oh, okay. I've got I've got a forty year old, sixty foot tall sycamore tree in my backyard. My maple tree is one that came up in the sea bone and it's about this tall. <laughs> so it's just doing school work here about it. I might be talking to y'all about well, coming hey, to break the news. Don't fall back. You better watch the wind when it's in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I can deal with it. A little for a month. Give it the heads up. They're heads down, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Well, I love y'all. Thank you so much for being here tonight and uh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm a Sylvia. She done gone. She got tired of us. <laughs> did she, did she just log off when she's done? Yeah. Um, yeah, she just did. So, but she, oh, she hung on with us through the whole, okay. through the whole thing. So good for her. Yeah. Good for her. <laughs> All right, so all that was recorded. Uh, let's make sure. The end.